Hello there, and welcome to the full storyline of Call of Duty Zombies. Today we will be entering the world of Call of Duty Zombies and exploring the intense story in full detail. From the beginning to the end, we will be exploring the storyline to the best of our knowledge and hope that Black Ops 3 only adds to this amazing story. Make sure you subscribe to both of our channels and pack a punch that like button to learn more and support this awesome video. Thank you and enjoy. Our starting point is not in one place. There's not just one tangible zombie storyline. As with comic books, there are multiple different timelines, multiverses so to speak. We will be discussing each one fully and how they all relate to each other. If you are ever confused, feel free to consult our chart in the bottom. Now let's begin. As with all life, it began in the water. Well, Atlantis. As many of you may or may not know, the fall of Atlantis is the beginning point for the Vrilia in our zombie storyline. When Atlantis falls, the Atlanteans move to the center of the Earth and develop into the Vrilia. The Vrilia are mythical beings based on the book called The Coming Race. This describes the Vrilia as angel-like people who can control Vril with their minds. Vril is an all-permenting fluid with unlimited energy. Vril comes from the center of the Earth, or what the Vrilia call the Black Sun, of which the Vrilia's powers are given, is another major piece of our zombie puzzle. The Vrilia create the Vril devices, of which are extremely powerful, that can destroy humanity, but disappear for ages. Next, Element 115 hits Earth throughout time. We know some of the locations for sure because of the Black Ops 1 terminal. Logging in under V Bush, we can pull up the text file that outlines the known locations of Element 115. They include Shinonuma, Tungusta, Groom Lake, Darice, and Moon. What is missed by the CIA database is Shangri-La and Origins, but we will address that later. Another quick note for continuity, the reason the Black Ops 1 terminal has zombies information is because the OSS sent spies to infiltrate a research group known as 935 during World War II. Group 935 was founded by Ludwig Maxis to improve the human condition. He gathered the brightest minds in the world to further research in all fields to help humanity. This group was one of the first to find Element 115. They performed many experiments trying to unlock its secrets. As time went on, the research was too costly. When an offer from the Nazi party was offered, Dr. Maxis could not refuse. Sophia, this letter is to go to the Reichstag High Command immediately. Gentlemen... It is with the utmost urgency that I draw your attention to the lack of funding being injected into the giant project. While I believe we are close to realizing the ultimate plan, we still have several years of development before it is ready. It would be folly to cut our expenditures so early in our development. As you know, early tests on the DG2 have easily outperformed expectations, and we fully anticipate mass producing the Wunderwaffe within the next few years. Work on the matter transference has, however, come to a standstill. We simply do not have enough Element 115 to continue the experiments. The test subjects have survived the teleportation, but are currently unresponsive to commands and cannot be controlled. If we are to overcome this obstacle, we need to increase the frequency and size of the experiment. To this end, I suggest we find not only a regular supply of 115, but that we also find a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America have informed us that the U.S. has a large supply of the element at the Nevada base. So time is of the essence if we are to stay ahead of them. This cannot be done if you cut the budget, nor can it be done if you insist on pressuring us into action before we are ready. I am, of course, available for discussion on the matter, but in the meantime, I will continue with the work here and try to win this damned war. Signed, etc., etc., Dr. Maxis. Agreeing to this deal would cause massive defections in Group 935 because it was again made up of people from all around the world. This is where our earliest radios begin. Dr. Edward Richthofen is experimenting with Dr. Schuster, and they are trying to test matter transference of a walnut. When their experiment is a success, Dr. Richthofen calls for Maxis to discuss the great potential of his findings. ...of unimaginable proportions. What? That you moved a walnut a few feet? Yes, Edward. We will improve the human condition by revolutionizing the walnut industry. I can see it now. Edward's walnut delivery. Don't be obtuse. How dare you call me that? We are at war, Edward. I will admit that there is promise here. But until this war is won... Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Maxis. But Group 935 is a research organization. What was the motto? To improve the human condition? What business?
business of ours is his war. Fine, Dr. Richtofen. I will let you in on a little administrative secret. We are finalizing a deal with the Nazi party. We need funding. We need equipment. They need new weapons. Chances are this war will end soon with a treaty or two, and we will be in a much better position to help the world. Are you certain this won't cause massive defections? We have scientists from all over the world working with us. That is why it is with the utmost confidence that I share this with you. No one will know of this. This is simply the breaking of an egg to make an omelette. Think of the tactical advantage we would have. Think of the cost. Think of the time. We can provide the Nazis technical expertise in various areas without putting all our eggs in your walnut basket. Good day, Edvard. And get back to your real work. I think Dr. Maxis has lost his perspective. No matter. We'll do this on our own and publish the findings before he has a chance to. You're not suggesting that Dr. Maxis would steal this technology and perfect it without us, are you? I would by no means discourage that thought. Great scientists must stick together and achieve great science. Dr. Maxis is short with Dr. Richthofen and informs him that they have no interest in his teleporting walnuts. He lets Dr. Richthofen in on his deal with the Nazis, which shocks Edward. Maxis, throughout his time, always looks down upon Richthofen. After his meeting, Edward and Dr. Schuster continue their research on the Matter Transference Device, or the MTD, for fear Maxis will steal their research in the future. January 4, 1940. Dr. Schuster and I, despite mounting pressure from Dr. Maxis, have continued working on the Matter Transference Prototype. We have made great strides in the last 30 days and are ready for our first human subject. If our calculations are correct, we will send a test subject, me, to the receptacle station sitting 30 yards away and behind a cinder block wall. Are you certain you want to do this, Dr. Richtofen? Nein, Dr. Schuster. But this must be done. Quickly, put in your earplugs and power up the machine. On January 4th, 1940, Edward decides to be the first human subject to be transported. When he is teleported, he arrives in a cave on Moon. Here, it is enclosed for him to breathe, but still feels the effects of being weightless. This is where we encounter the first real device in the game. Later to be called the MPD, the pyramid structure, is so cold to the touch and is dustless. When Edward decides to touch the MPD, he gets a static shock. This one touch causes him to hear voices. This gradually causes him to go insane, but we must point out to anyone who works with 115 will also go insane. Is there a power outage? Why is it so dark? I feel almost... Weightless. How very unexpected. Dr. Schuster? Hello? There. I can see now. Oh my God. I'm standing in a circular cave, surrounded by some kind of machinery. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. It looks almost alien in nature. There's a pyramid structure at the center of the room. I'm going to try and carefully touch it. Ah! Static electricity. It's smooth to the touch. Very cold. Not a speck of dust. Hmm. Might be hollow. The chamber is quite large. I see what looks like capacitors in the ceiling of the chamber. But there are no obvious connections to anything electrical. What is this place? Dr. Schuster, is that you? Dr. Schuster, look at this. It appears to be covered in some kind of hieroglyphic language. I've not seen anything like it before. Why are you whispering to me? There's no need for that. What's this loss? Do you hear that? It sounds like... What happened? I seem to be in some kind of jungle. I can't be certain of where I am. Oh, 
Max states this in the text logs in the Black Ops 1 server. After Richthofen touches the MPD, he is teleported to Shangri-La, where he is initially attacked by native people. Soon after, Richthofen realizes that the people are primitive, and he rules them like a god. He finds a massive supply of Element 115 in Shangri-La, and has a massive altar built for him, with his name, of course, etched into it. After a month of searching for Richthofen, Dr. Schuster is about to give up on the MTD when Richthofen teleports back. He's clearly gone mad listening to the voices in his head already, but now is creating his evil plan, his grand scheme. He then gathers all defectors of Group 935 and teleports them to the moon. They begin to build Griffin Station over two long years. During this time, Richthofen continues to work for Group 935 under Maxis, but plots against him. Once Griffin Station is completed, we hear Richtofen give the role of lead scientist to Dr. Groff, who is in charge of figuring out the MPD. Richtofen proclaims it is the real device, that he has deciphered their language and it is gateway to the Afa. This is met with shock by the other scientists, but they believe in Richtofen because of all that they have done so far. Richtofen returns to Doris, which is codenamed Eagle's Nest, and continues experiments with Maxis. For two long years, we have toiled here and at Eagle's Nest to build our fortifications. For two long years, we have taken equipment to build up our labs. For two long years, we have worked under Group 935, believing that Dr. Maxis truly wants to help the world. For two long years, we've led a double life. Today, that all ends. I bring to you what this project is all about. What I have worked to keep from my enemy. What is it, Dr. Richthofen? Looks alien. It is an ancient drill machine. And you, Dr. Groff, are now the lead scientist here at Griffin Station. You will be the one to discover how it works. We first must discover what it does. Nine, Dr. Groff. I know what it does. It has a direct connection to another dimension. Let us see, preposterous. No more preposterous than teleporting all of this gear to the moon or to building Griffin Station. Is it? I suppose not. How do you know what it does? I have found many interesting real artifacts here. I have decoded some of their language. All signs point to this device being a stable gateway to the ether. Dr. Richthofen. I'm aware of a project being run by Dr. Maxis at Doris concerning Brill. As am I. I am going back to my post at Group 935 to continue the charade. I will be finding out just how much information Dr. Maxis has on Brill. Once the machine is operational, I will enact my plan on return. Gentlemen, let the games begin. This is so loud. On Moon, Dr. Groff and Dr. Schuster learn how to power the MPD when they kill a rat near the machine. It runs on life. Richtofen orders them to kill as many people as they need to power the device in the name of science. But the true intentions is for Richtofen to enter the device and become a god. We can only assume Richtofen has guessed how to power the MPD through his description. While many men are being killed on the moon, Richtofen aids in Dr. Maxis's effort to create an undead army. Many new test facilities sprout up such as Varuk and Keener der Toten. Varuk houses the first set of zombie experiments that eventually fail and are left to die. Keener der Toten was used to present the potential to investors to back Group 935 and their research of Element 115 by demonstrating the many uses that it can do, most notably their weapon advancement. Dr. Maxis creates his ray gun, while Dr. Richtofen creates the Wonderwalk DG-2 and the Monkey Bomb using the Element 115. Group 935 is in dire need of Element 115 and continues to scour the Earth for it. This is how the Shinonuma facility is created. Richtofen's insanity grows, and so does his affections for power. The MTD and the DG-2 are his greatest accomplishments. Maxis promises to mass-produce the Wonderwaff to the Nazi party for Richtofen, but has no intentions on fulfilling his promise. Maxis then decides to further his research and take Edward's MTD plans. This drives a huge hate-filled wedge in between their relationship due to the fact Maxis is actually stealing Richtofen's idea. Richtofen tampers with Maxis' experiments, having almost mastered his version of the MTD. Richtofen buys his time while souls are being transferred into the power of the MPD. Richtofen also continues his testing for the Undead Army at the Call of the Dead facility. 
Now, Call the Dead is a Nazi ship and not crashed during the 1940s. Here, Richthofen creates many audio logs recording his time trying to unlock the human mind with element 115. Another day, another film. This time, subject N3 WP just slightly at the floor. The Russian subject still smells like urine, even after he was given a bath and deloused twice. And I think I might have killed the specimen from Mexico. His spleen is on the floor and he's not moving anymore. I can verify with certainty, however. That the barrier is not located in the sea. Dr. Ma continue no matter the cost. I wonder what he might think of the experiment. The little girl. I still have not had any luck reprogramming any of the live specimens. Dr. Ma the key to unlocking the human mind will be more easily discovered on someone who isn't dead yet. I am not convinced. The army is stored until I can break this. this Trust Oh, apparently someone in security found a spy in the group. They are delivering him from bro the place of one that I broke. <laughs> Element 115 can reanimate corpses, but there is no controlling the zombies once they come back to life. Richtofen experiments on three subjects, a Mexican, Russian, and Japanese. With each, he performs many experiments, of which he kills the Mexican subject. Soon after the Mexican subject dies, Group 935 learns of its first of many spies. This spy is housed in Verruckt, and is not Peter McCain, contrary to popular belief. Tank Dempsey is sent in as the leader of a marine recovery unit to save the spy, as outlined in the Black Ops 1 terminal. But when listening to the radios, Richtofen reveals that the spy is already found in Verruckt, and he suspects there are at least two more spies in the group, and he states Peter McCain and Harvey Yena. Now, it would not make sense for Richtofen to say two more spies if he already identified the Rook spy as Peter McCain. The significance of the two spies will be brought up soon. It would seem that the OSS realized that we captured one of their spies. They tried to send a rescue team into the Rook. That was all. First batch of ten subjects. I suspect there are other moles in the organization. Dr. Harvey Ena and Dr. Peter McKay, to be precise. Not to include any Americans in Group 935, no matter how much genius they held. Stupid Americans, this year. Apple pies on baseball and children. The Varuk rescue mission is a complete failure, and everyone is killed besides Tank Dempsey. He is captured and given to Richthofen to replace the Mexican as a test experiment. Richthofen learns that the Element 115 also has a side effect on memory loss. As all three of his subjects forget who they are, the names of these three subjects are Tank Dempsey, Nikolai Belinsky, and Takio Mazaki. These are our main characters we play as in the game. Finally, when the MPD is full, Dr. Groff calls Richthofen and tells him the device is ready for him. Richthofen is overjoyed and plans to set Operation Shield into motion. Soon after, Richthofen learns that Dr. Maxis did not keep his promise of mass producing the DG2. This sends Richthofen into a psychotic rage. He now alters his plans to include killing Maxis and his beloved daughter, Samantha. As for the control group test, they have been put on hold. Recently, I discovered that Dr. Maxis does not plan mass producing the DG2 as he swore he would. If he won't move those plans forward, then I will continue following his dream of an undead army. He doesn't deserve his perch of power. He doesn't know what to do with it. But I know just what to do with him. And I'll take care of that little brat if I get the chance to. When he returns to Doris for more testing with Dr. Maxis, they create the first Hellhound by mistake. Dr. Maxis uses Samantha's pet dog, Fluffy, as a test subject, which causes Samantha to wander into the laboratory looking for her dog. Ritalfin seizes the opportunity, locking Samantha, Maxis, and Fluffy inside the teleporter. He then teleports them all, hoping he kills them because the MTD in Doris was still not calibrated correctly. As usual, your incompetence has... What? Do you hear that, Doctor? Quiet, you fool! Test number six is a failure, but the experiment has caused some kind of electrical force to energize within the chamber. Well, open the door! Doctor, I don't think... Open the door! Now! Daddy, what are you doing with the floor? Damn it, Samantha, I told you never to come in here. Edward, get her out of here. Yes, Doctor. <laughs> Samantha! Stop her! 
Easy. Come here, Samantha. Good girl, Rossi. Gently, Samantha. That's not Rossi anymore. We must get out of here. What? Edward, what are you doing? Open the door! Edward, open this door now! Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> when Richthofen teleports Sam, Maxis, and Fluffy, they are all teleported to different places. We do not know where Fluffy was teleported, but we can only assume Maxis was teleported inside the tunnels of Buried, but we know Sam was teleported to the moon. Samantha is running in a hysterical mess through Griffin Station when she accidentally falls into the MPD. This is how Samantha Maxis becomes our first announcer in Zombies. The MPD controls the zombies due to its virile technology. Samantha now resides in a dimension called the Ether. When Ritofen returns to the moon base, he is furious at the outcome and tells Groff to find Maxis to try and get Samantha out. Groff uses the MPD to locate Dr. Maxis and teleport him to the moon base. Before Maxis can understand what is happening, Groff explains the situation to Maxis. Maxis then tries to coax his daughter out of the MPD. When she opens the MPD, he asks her to kill everyone. This is because Dr. Maxis feels betrayed, and Element 115 has led to his blinding insanity. Someone shoots Maxis by the MPD, which sends Samantha into a hell rage to kill all things related to Richthofen. Now, when Maxis was killed, his soul entered the MPD, but since it was filled, he was transferred into another dimension where he exists inside technology. Everyone at Griffin Station tries to flee. The zombies begin to slaughter everyone, but some scientists make it out. It is assumed that Richthofen flees to Shinonuma to try and gather his notes. Inside the doctor's quarters resides his research on Element 115 and the creation of the Wonderwolf DG2. When the zombies catch up, to Edward, he sends for his experiments to save him. Again, this is when Tank, Takio, and Nikolai arrive on Shinonuma in our trailer. They fight the undead until Richthofen is able to teleport them to Darice. At Shinonuma, there is an MTD made by Richthofen for a quick escape. At Darice, the four battle all of the zombies, but soon there is no hope. 
Samantha is way too powerful and Richthofen knows that they are doomed. As they are about to be overrun, the team teleports while holding the Wonderwolf DG2. This causes a rip in the space-time continuum, causing them to travel into the future. No, where the hell is my vodka? Oh. Yes, of course. The DG2 must have overloaded the teleporter, ripping space-time, backtracing us to the future! How wonderful! <laughs> There's my vodka! Thank you, Taki! Oh, come on, Tax! Suck it up and walk it off! This is when temporal displacement starts. Because of the rip in space-time, guns, perks, pack-a-punch, even entire towns are displaced through time. This is why we have futuristic weapons showing up in old maps. This is why Nocturne Toten will appear in a later map. On arriving to Kino Dier Toten, Richthofen begins to formulate his grand scheme. He plans to assemble some of the real devices he researched on Moon to fight Samantha. As our characters fight through Kino, Richthofen learns of another station that might house teleporters, in which he can manipulate teleporting through time better. At the theater, there exists Nova 6 experiments gone wrong. These zombies have no eyes due to the Nova 6 effects, but more will be explained as these were tested on here. Our heroes locate the lunar lander at Kino and fly to the Ascension facility. The reason the facility even exists is because of our spies mentioned earlier. Harvey Eno was lucky enough to escape Sam's rage because he did not work with Richtofen. He took his research and helped create the Ascension group. Peter would also return to America and help create the first group in the United States, located at Grooms Lake, Nevada. At Grooms Lake, there is a massive supply of Element 115, which allows for testing for many years, so much so that the research is outfitted in the Pentagon. When the zombies attack the Pentagon, it is because their direct connection between the two maps. It is possible that the Ascension group and the Grooms Lake crew stayed in some contact, but was by no means working with each other. Each group knows of each other's existence. As our characters battle through Ascension, they learn what happened to the facility. A scientist named Yuri was demoted because his research stalled on creating the Gersh device. The Ascension group was developing the Thundergun, Gersh device, and Cosmonaut monkeys. Yuri, in his disgust, continues his own research using a journal containing research of 115. But I can't fight Gersh over this. I was able to hold on to my teeth. Some after hours research. No one else really understands what Project Mercury is capable of. Until then, this lab will have to do. Thank God they did not take the diary. The things I have learned about Element I'll have to conduct this research on my own, away from the destructive hands of Gersh. His research into Project Mercury has stalled, but will he be transferred? I don't we can only assume that after Group 935 fell apart in 1945, the living scientists returned with their research. It is very possible that Richthofen dropped his journal of 115 from Shinonuma in Doris. When everything was said and done in Doris, the location, it was taken over by America and the Soviet Union. Yuri goes insane and is then manipulated by Samantha to finish the Gersh device. When he presents it to Gersh, it gives time for Samantha to drag Gersh in and let the zombies out which is the reverse effect in our game. Samantha then rains hell on the facility, killing everyone. No, I won't! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! You're, you're stuck! Fine. Okay. Okay. I will. But I can't take all the credit. If you will do me the others. She then turns either Yuri or sends Gersh's body into the Pentagon Thief and sends him to Five with our Fab Four arriving in Ascension. This is how both maps take place at the same time. Our characters hear Gersh's voice through some form of technology as he asks them to free him from Sam's control. Please, help me. She's coping. The mechanism must be repaired. Richtofen then learns of the Ascension's group Casimir mechanism and powers it on. When the machine is operational, they are able to free Gersh and teleport out to Call of the Dead. When our heroes teleport to Call of the Dead, they teleport too far into the future. This causes Sam to stop attacking our characters in five as they survive the zombies' attack. The Call of the Dead is now shipwrecked in Siberia, in which the Ascension group did set up a facility. 
Our teleporter there confirms this. In 2010, we have George Romero trying to make a movie based on all the history and rumors of the past in this universe. When our heroes get there, Samantha instantly takes control. The zombies attack, and she changes George to try and aid her revenge. Our Call of the Dead characters are asked by Richtofen to retrieve the Vril device, which we can assume Richtofen had on the ship at the time. When it was shipwrecked, somehow it ended up in our lighthouse. What we do know is that using the VR-11, which spells Vril, we can cure the zombies. Element 115 reanimates cells, but Vril can bring life back to them. When a zombie is saved, he is lifted into the air inside the lighthouse, which is, in exchange, rewards you with a golden rod or Vril device. Once Richtofen has it, he teleports to an old favorite, Shangri-La. Shangri-La was discovered after Richtofen by two explorers named Brock and Gary. Two men on the search for Agartha and ancient secrets, they eventually traveled back in time due to triggering the time-traveling temple. A time-traveling temple? Of course! They ended up becoming stuck inside a room and dying, no matter what our heroes actually did to free them. Through many steps of the Easter egg, our main characters work with Brock and Gary to try and save them. In the end, Richtofen acquires the Focusing Stone, or Anti-115, and Brock and Gary are trapped in an endless cycle of death. Knowing how to teleport from his previous visits to Shangri-La, Richtofen tries to teleport to Griffin Station, or Moon. To his surprise, the group lands in Groom Lake, Nevada. What was unknown to Richtofen was the advancement in the United States 115 Research Division. What started out as the OSS, then the CIA, finally became Broken Arrow in our Zombies game. JFK comments about this in the Map 5, saying he wonders if this came from the Groom's Lake program. Thanks to the large deposits of Element 115 found in Groom's Lake, the United States was in great shape to research 115 after World War II. Thanks to the American spies in Group 935, they were able to steal a lot of research, including the chalkboards with notes on Element 115 and Vril devices. Richtofen, with the Vril device and focusing stone in hand, rushes to the teleporter off to Moon. Welcome to 2025, the future. A lot is happening. Firstly, in a sweatshop in China, there were huge developments. A new Element 115 weapon, the Soliquifier, or GUI Soliquifier, began to be developed and created. The sweatshop was right next to another building in Province 22, where there was a fascination with the undead. As many of you may know, Who's Who was developed here, and this was all prior to our Black Ops 2 crew arriving here. During this time period, the United States was making great developments on studying the Pack-a-Punch and other machines. As seen in 5 and then in Green Run, the US was able to develop an almost functional Pack-a-Punch. It only needed a battery to function properly in the Green Run location. Broken Arrow also created Avogadro, the electrified man who haunts the location. In the same area, the United States has developed denizens, strange flying, crawling beasts that would not be released until the event in Nevada. The United States began drilling near Nuketown. The drill was seen on the Nuketown loading screen is outlined in Origins on one of the research walls. We see the drill was a 115 excavator. It makes sense with all of our radios thus far that Broken Arrow would be mining for 115. During their excavation, Element 115's effects take place, changing many of the workers to zombies. The United States responds to this by sending in a covert operation using the CDC and CIA to clean up the mess. Things begin happening around the same time as Moon, overheard in the map. The zombies begin overwhelming Nuketown and the CDC and CIA agents. While on the moon, our Fab Four begin the Big Bang Easter Egg. Richtofen can be heard completing the steps in Nuketown. When Richtofen finally charges the real device with the Focusing Stone, he's able to exchange places with Samantha in the MPD. At a point during this, zombies fall under Richtofen's control. Maxis then seizes the opportunity to try and take over Griffin Station. He manipulates the Fab Four, including Samantha, to launch rockets filled with 115 at Earth. This destroys massive parts of the planet. It sends the world into chaos and a new airborne disease occurs, with Element 115 being exposed through the air with the massive impact. One location where the 115 rockets hit is the Nuketown map. That is why at the end of the game we see a rocket hit the map. Now, our Black Ops 2 storyline begins. Since the rockets hit, Maxis and Richtofen struggle for power. Over 10 years, the two manipulate more people trying to take control of the spires. The significance of these spires is assumed to be their impact on the polarity of Earth. Richtofen is able to contact any person who has ingested 115 in any way. During the fallout of the rockets, a group of cannibals rose to power called the Flesh. Science has failed us. He has abandoned us. In this new world, we alone are your salvation. We alone can light the way. Hear our words. Feed our core. There is but 
one path to enlightenment. Just as they consume us, we must consume them. We are the living, and we are the dead. We are the flesh, and the flesh is us. We will not starve. We will thrive. Throw us a bone! The subjects display short-term memory loss, psychosis, delusion, and paranoia. Short-term memory loss has also been reported, but as of yet, I've been unable to confirm this. What's that? Who's there? Yes, I can hear you. Huh? Of course I have. There's, there's nothing else. No, I, I won't do that. How do I know you're not lying? You, you could be making all that up. Huh? Well, sure, that, that only makes sense. Dude. You know what? But... No, no, I see. Sure. Really? But they're my friends. Yes. Of course I see now. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. For you and the flesh. This is a warning to anyone contacted by a group of mysterious voices. Several of our party began to hear the voices and their competing instructions and incompatible demands drove a wedge down the center of the camp. Half of the camp is carrying out the demands of only through electronics. This voice is a big, long, and its ultimate goal is unclear. The other voice cannot be heard by humans who have not been on the long madness this way lies. Neither of these instruction sets will understand. They decided to fight back against the zombies by eating them. Food can be assumed to be hard resources come by during the 115 apocalypse, and this group could lure people in with their promise of food. Our first transit character, Samuel Stullinger, was part of the flesh, as revealed by the Die Rise cutscene. He remained with the group for many years until their fall. The fall of the flesh came when Maxis came into contact with a group of people who followed his orders. This group fought the flesh for control of a spire, but were ultimately overrun by the zombies. Rick Toffin and Maxis were at a stalemate because no one they manipulated could take control of the spires. When Samuel leaves the flesh, he runs into our next character, Russman. Russman has been wandering the earth for many years after his experiments at Broken Arrow. We can only assume Russman has extensive work with 115 because of his extreme memory loss. The two team up and end up on a bus towards transit. Here they meet our next two characters, Misty and Marlton. This group of four fights the undead until they are contacted by Rick Toffin and Maxis. You are not one of those foul creatures. Excellent. I have been searching for decades. Listen now. What I have to say is of the utmost importance to mankind. If you would see this planet freed from the curse of these wretched undead creatures and the monstrous evil which controls them, then you must obey my every command. I cannot effect physical change yet. Of your group, you are the only one who seems to be able to hear me. So you must convince your deaf friends to heat up the obelisk! Now, there are three possible paths that can happen. One, the characters follow Maxis. Two, the characters follow Richtofen. Or three, they follow neither. The consequences of each will be explained shortly. By completing the transit easter egg, our four characters prove useful to both Richtofen and Maxis. Richtofen decides that this group of characters will be right for completing his final ascendance into Agartha. Richtofen teleports our characters from Transit to Die Rise, where he continues to revive our characters in hopes they will complete the newest spire. Richtofen mentions that Samuel needs to mend the rift, which refers to the rip in space-time caused by Richtofen by teleporting in Dereese. The rift allows for people to pass through dimensions and universes. With the rift active, other forces could disrupt Richtofen's control of the world. The Transit crew again completes their quest and activates the second spire. From here, they are almost all but abandoned by the voices. The transit crew inevitably upsets one or more of the voices during the story. Our characters wander from place to place until they end up in Buried. Once again, the voices return, asking the crew for help. Buried itself was displaced through space and time thanks to Element 115. Our heroes complete yet another easter egg to give control of our spire to the last voice. Now, in each map had navigation cards that were found. These cards were inserted into the nav card tables, allowed for each of the spires to sink. When all the towers were synced and all the nav cards inserted, a box and buried can be activated. This is called the end game. 
Depending on which side was chosen, there are different outcomes that lead to the same ending. If our transit crew decides to listen to Richtofen during the endgame, Richtofen takes control of Samuel's body and is trapped inside. His godlike status fails and our transit crew is killed by the zombie. Finally, I am in control! The ether is mine to manipulate as I wish! The moon is now my own personal plaything! <laughs> If our transit crew picks Maxis, he sacrifices the Earth and all of its people to enter Argatha. Once again, the world ends and everything is doomed. The process has begun! Now I control the Ether's energy! I can at last reach Argatha! Our final possible ending is if our characters, if they ignore the voices, then our characters end up being overrun. You can see their deaths in the Berry Easter Egg when they reach round infinity. This brings a close to our main timeline in the first universe. In this universe exists other dimensions like Ather, Argatha, and Purgatory. Welcome to the 1920s and 1930s. The world is both jovial and in the midst of a depression. In San Francisco, four individuals were transported to Alcatraz. None of them were good individuals, however. None of them. Billy Handsome, South Luca, Finn O'Leary, and Al the Weasel Arlington were all there. This map was Mob of the Dead, and this took place on an alternate timeline or dimension. There's not enough information to yet prove or disprove multiple timelines. Both ideas seem to make sense. There can be an alternate timeline or another dimension existing inside our main story. Our characters in Mob of the Dead find out they are stuck with an endless cycle. Through the Mob of the Dead Easter Egg, we find out what happened in reality in the 1920s to escape from Alcatraz with our Mob of the Dead crew. In the end, the Weasel is killed by the three other characters. The three are put to death in the electric chair, and time moves on like normal. The existence of an afterlife mode continues to suggest to players that we are in an alternate dimension. Somehow the Weasel has knowledge of their endless cycle in the map. He makes references to Nikolai, but cannot understand why he knows his name. It isn't until the Weasel is able to kill the other inmates that he's able to break the cycle. What is even more interesting is our zombies are not controlled by Samantha in this map. What is likely is that an evil spirit who lives inside the MPD is able to control this purgatory dimension through the pyramid device. We'll swallow your pride! Something far more terrible than you lies here! When the cycle is broken, the Mob of the Dead map finally ends up in the lives of our characters. In this same dimension, a new group of evil individuals end up in a place called Morgue City. This new crew, riddled with evil deeds, is stuck in the very same dimension. Treyarch has hinted at only the curse survived in the purgatory world, which explains how our characters continue to get sent into this dimension. Now in another universe, during World War I, two scientists named Edward Richthofen and Ludwig Maxis find a site in France that houses the element 115. Group 935 is founded years in advance in this timeline. Their research with 115s allows for the Germans to make huge strides in technology. Maxis and Richthofen's friendship in this universe allows for massive production of weapons. It changes the course of history into a steampunk version of the world and World War I. The characters Takio, Nikolai, and Dempsey are sent from their respective countries to investigate the appearance of giant robots. When they arrive, they find Richthofen in the process of saving Maxis. Through their research, Maxis had gone insane in this universe. He is able to be controlled by Samantha who resides in yet another dimension. Richthofen is extremely cautious of element 115 in this universe as he sees his best friend destroyed by it. When our characters join Richthofen, they uncover the secrets of the ancients in this universe. The Rilia existed before the Element 115 impacted the Earth. The Knights Templar during the Crusades found the Element 115, but were locked away when they turned into zombies. When the Germans unearthed the zombies, they were free to attack and turn on the Germans. Through the Easter Egg, we learn of the Elemental Staffs, which are forms of real devices. Maxis was able to replicate them, as well as the songs needed to enter the Crazy Place. The Crazy Place is the true gateway to Agartha in this universe. When we complete the Easter Egg, our characters teleport after sending Maxis to Argatha. When this happens, the Origins cutscene rolls. The cutscene takes place in a third universe. This universe does not have any zombies in existence. The Eddie that Samantha plays with is not Edward Richtofen. These are children in a universe where Samantha is just a normal child. When the scene comes to a close and Samantha says, My dad has a plan, it refers to the Maxis of their universe, making the heroes of the game come to life. Now, this next part is conjecture. 
but is our best guess to the story before the giant map is released. Maxis is able to see the rips in space-time and how many universes are being affected by the first universe. At some point, their universe will be affected by the terrible evils of Element 115. To save his future, he rips our Origins characters from their universe and sends them to the first universe. Based on the giant trailer, our Origins crew becomes aware of what the first universe will become. Now back to the in-game facts. From our giant trailer, we find out that our Origins crew is sent back in time to save the future. Origins Richthofen murders Nazi Richthofen after he teleports Sam, Maxis, and Fluffy. Our characters are taken back by Richthofen's change in plan as they attempt to change history. Richthofen is quoted, fighting for a better tomorrow. We would like to thank you for watching our presentation of Call of Duty Zombies Storyline. Please understand when this theory is old like the rest, there will be many flaws found. We did the best we could with the information available at us to the time. This took many days to create, so please leave a rating, share with your fellow zombie slayers, and leave a comment about your thoughts below. This has been a story overview and is not an explanation for everything in Zombies. We want to create a concise video on the story thus far so that anyone could watch the video and understand what was going on in Call of Duty Zombies. I want to thank you for watching, keep up the zombie slang, and we will see you in the next Call of Duty Zombies A History Video. Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> Hello, Samantha. Your little brat. What time is coming? <laughs> oh!